A piece called a base bar is carefully fitted on the inside of the top under the base end of the bridge. It spreads the strain of the down pressure from the bridge and, in conjunction with the sound post on the treble side, helps control the tone and balance of the instrument. Harpsichords produce sound by plucking the strings. This is done by a sophisticated device called a jack. In a spinet, there is one jack for every string, 54 in all. These are made to very close tolerances. The jack must be a close fit in the register to work precisely. The jacks are made of pear wood, which does not swell or shrink very much. The string is plucked by a quill, a piece of a feather. This fits in a tiny mortise on a part called the tongue. Mr. Wilson has built several special tools for making jacks. The tongue sits in a fork in the jack body and pivots on a pin. A precisely located hole must be drilled for this pivot pin. The bit for this hole, as well as two angled holes below the fork, is made from a piece of music wire with the end flattened and sharpened to a diamond or spade point. A piece of roofing lead is inserted into each jack body to make sure it returns quickly. Similarly, a piece of boar bristle will be used as a spring for the tongue. All the elements are now ready to be assembled using cheap dressmaker's pins. The head of a violin can be decorated in a number of ways. Human and animal heads are occasionally carved, but the most popular art form has always been the scroll. Journeyman Bowers uses various templates to mark in guidelines. Then he will saw to these lines to rough out the basic scroll. This will be finished with chisels and gouges, and eventually sandpaper. The violin is one of the most perfect forms of instruments that has ever been evolved. No one yet has come up with any further improvements. The size of the instrument has been very carefully established and the air volume cannot be deviated from very much. 
The entire instrument is very strong physically, and it lasts longer than almost any other type of string instrument. The violin is made from wedges of wood split like pie slices from the round tree. Therefore, even its conception from the beginning is a very harmonious process that suits not only the acoustic properties of the woods used, but also the shape of the tree in its natural form. On the spinet, decoration on the name board is the place where the instrument maker can show off his artwork. Mr. Wilson draws a flower design on a panel. This will be executed in a technique known as marquetry. The two pieces of holly and ebony veneer will be spot glued together and the design sawn out with a very small bladed saw. When this is finished, he will have two complete and interchangeable designs, one black and one white. In order to do marquetry properly and tastefully, a craftsman needs to have a good background in drawing and design. When working out a good design, one has to consider not only the shape of the design itself, but the spaces in between the elements. The distribution of the design over the surface also has to be taken into account. The colors of the woods used will greatly influence the size and shape of the elements in the design. A craftsman must develop perfect mastery of the saw. Any error which is made in sawing out the pattern will also be made in the background and will be impossible to correct without resorting to patches. The case of the spinet is rubbed with linseed oil in order to add depth and color to the wood. This is allowed to dry and covered with about 20 thin coats of shellac, rubbed down between each and finally polished with a fine abrasive called rotten stone and soapy water. Meanwhile, Mr. Wilson has heated up a pan of sand, which he will use to shade the white pieces of holly by scorching them. This colors the wood all the way through, so the color won't be lost by scraping and sanding. select a piece of pear wood for this wedge under the fingerboard and I'll fit this to the body. All right.
The neck is fitted to the body carefully and glued. This becomes a delicate clamping job because most of the clamping surfaces are curved. In order to keep the string tension from pulling the glue joint apart, Mr. Wilson, like other builders, drives nails through the end block and into the neck. After a base coat of shellac is put down, the name board is signed in ink. The rest of the shellac can then be applied. The basic shape of the violin is complete, but there are many detail elements that need to be added. The holes for the pegs must be drilled very carefully and accurately. The pegs themselves are made of ebony. The final shaping is done with a special peg cutting tool that gives them all the same taper. This taper is repeated in the reamer he uses to shape the peg holes in the peg box. Each peg must fit both sides of the hole perfectly or it will squeak and bind. The tail pin is fitted using the same reamer. The fingerboard is made by gluing a thin piece of ebony to a wedge made of some lighter weight material. This also has a purfling and a maple binding. Harpsichords are strung with a soft iron wire. Many gauges of this wire are available. The instrument maker must choose his wires by experience, knowing which notes will be produced by appropriate tensions on any diameter wire. The tuning pins or rest pins are forged by the blacksmith and don't have a hole for the wire. It is wound on in a way which causes it to grip the pin firmly. This is easy to do with soft, untempered wire. The bass strings are brass. Overspun or wound wires are not used on harpsichords. <laughs> 